To understand dynamic actions, let's look at an example custom object I've created to track vehicles. There's a picklist field called status to track the life cycle of the vehicle. And there's a series of actions that point to various flows. Historically, we've added these buttons to a page layout. From this record, we're going to open App Builder. By clicking on the header or highlights panel component, we can enable dynamic actions for this page. This removes the actions that were on the page layout, and we can add actions right here in App Builder. One of my actions adds a service appointment to the vehicle. But that action really only makes sense when the vehicle is owned by a customer and not any time earlier in its life cycle. And we can do more advanced rules. Changing a vehicle configuration could occur in two different stages. We'll create a filter for both options and then use an OR condition. Finally, we have a small group of people who can view loan details. Besides just field values, we can show or hide buttons based on advanced options, like users who have a certain custom permission. Maybe something we don't even give system admins. Let's save and activate so we can see it in action. There's our configure button because this vehicle is in the evaluation stage. If the stage changes so that it's already delivered to a customer, we'll see that disappear and the service appointment button in its place. And notice that we never saw the button for loan details because I don't have the custom permission needed to see it.